بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace and blessings be upon all you all and جمعة مبارك to everybody الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم all praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimoon that O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Allah also tells us that Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yawfir lakum dunubakum wa man yuta illah wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azimah that, O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah, be cognizant of Allah, and say that which is right. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafahu qawli subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alam tana innaka anta l'alim al-hakeem Pray that may Allah open my chest, make easy for me this task, and loosen the knots in my tongue that these words may be understood. And glory be to you, Allah, glory be to you alone, that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Verily, it is you who is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Again, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's a blessing to be here with you all again. And continuing off our conversation in our khutbah last week, or in the, in, in the preceding weeks, we are talking a little bit about uh, prophetic conduct and, and some of the uh, little things that we miss in our day-to-day -day lives that have tremendous value with respect to uh, not just the akhirah, but also the impact that they can have in our life that we sometimes take for, uh, that we discount um, as something not part of our walk of Islam or our walk of life and our walk uh, in terms of how we worship Allah, how we uh, practice our faith um, and talk, talking about some of those things that uh, we overlook in, in, in terms of our own character and how we conduct ourselves. Uh, one of the things that to highlight for today's khutbah um, is something that oftentimes gets very much just uh, you know normalized in a way, but it, it, it doesn't maybe get seen as uh, are uh, a, a significant part of our practice, a significant part of our faith, um, and it's just something that we just do. It's whether it's you know culturally adopted or it's just the thing that's said and uh, becomes almost you know, uh, you know devoid of uh, the the significance and the meaning and the honor that it has. And this is specifically with respect to uh, the importance of. Uh, our greeting in, in Islam, the greetings that we offer each other with respect to Assalamu Alaikum and the, the greetings of peace that we exchange. As I mentioned, you know, oftentimes just like uh, there's the uh, perceived notion of how inshallah becomes just something that's just said and uh, is, is not really reflected upon of when someone says inshallah, the, the weight that that actually does bear in the same aspect, thinking about how our use of or maybe lack of use of and, and uh, appreciation of the greetings of peace in Islam, the Islamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, um, oftentimes become watered down to uh, the level of something like a hi, a hello, a hey. Um, but thinking that there's so much more that is in this greeting, in the exchange of this greeting, that uh, not only has a benefit for ourselves, but has a benefit for the society that is around us, for the relationships that we have, um, for you know, all the different things that are uh, in and around ourselves, as well as for our akhira. But again, uh, because it's such a common thing that that is there, it's just something maybe many of us grew up with or something that's just so commonplace, we oftentimes maybe don't know what's the significance of it or have a chance to give a little bit of a pause of um, what the words we are saying, the impact that they may have. So just wanted to briefly share a few things that, that came from 
not just uh, when we were looking at uh, the collection of hadith on prophetic conduct and character from uh, Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam al nawis compilation, um, but continuing in that uh, as well, uh, a short compilation on uh, some of the, the wisdoms and some of the narrations around uh, the Islamic greetings, uh, the exchange of peace, the salams that are given, and, and what significance the Prophet ﷺ has attributed and taught to, to us about these that we sometimes might miss. So uh, we know in the Qur'an that Allah tells us that when we uh, enter each other's homes or when we see each other to greet each other with a greeting from Allah, alluding to As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, a greeting that is blessed and good, uh, that this is not just a a uh, very colloquial thing or just something cheap or man-made um, of, hey, hi, how are you or whatnot. But this is a greeting from Allah. This is something that already sets itself apart from the casual greeting we may give. So thinking about when we are greeting each other, when we choose to use salam, when we choose to greet each other in salam, or when we choose to not greet each other in salam and just say, hi, hey, thinking about what disservice are we doing? Uh, what, what are we not utilizing that Allah has given us something beautiful, has given us a gift that's beautiful, uh, has given us something that, uh, you know, we, we may not see the immediate value of, but is, is, in, is, is in immensely uh, treasured with respect to its benefits, uh, not just in this life, but in the next. And thinking about that, you know, it's something that we don't, we just kind of treat cheaply and like, ah, oh, no, okay, we're like, we're just going to say something else that's a little bit easier. Uh, we're conditioned to think that, oh, because it's a, it's a different society, it's a different space that would make us feel weird or stand out. But thinking about, again, restoring the significance in our head that we might have been taught salam or assalamu alaikum from uh, our parents or feeling like it's just a cultural thing that we are inheriting and, and just practicing because just that's just how the way to do, to do it. But thinking about where are the foundations of that? Where are the roots of that? And that this is a greeting that is bestowed upon us, that is gifted to us from Allah. Um, and a greeting that Allah wants us to exchange with one another. Um, because when we think about it, when we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, um, you know, we not only just say peace upon you or just say hello, hi, um, but may peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. May the mercy of Allah be upon you. May you know, You're invoking a prayer for this person. So it's a way of us being able to check ourselves uh, in a different space that what we are exchanging with someone else is not just a genuine salam, not just a genuine greeting, but also one that uh, regardless of what that situation might be, it may be a little bit tense, it may be a conflict that happened, but we're praying for the well-being and the peace and mercy and security for that person to also have just as much as we would. Um, and so thinking about uh, that this, this is a greeting that uh, is from Allah, it's something that stands apart from any kind of man-made exchange or greeting uh, and and what we're told about in terms of not just when we are given that greeting, when uh, Allah tells us in the Quran that when we are greeting uh, each other, that when we're greeted with this greeting, to return in greeting with that which is at least equal or better. So thinking about, you know, when someone says, Assalamu alaikum, and uh, the encouraged response being, you know, wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, um, to not necessarily be like, hey, I want up to you, or I did this, or I'm better than this, or whatnot, but to promote amongst ourselves that, hey, we should be better. We should try to be better in that sense as a mutual uh, attaining of good, as a mutual kind of healthy competition of good, but not in this way that we just discount someone that, oh, they only said assalamu alaikum or they only did that, but as a way of encouragement that, hey, um, you know, we, we both can be better. We can improve each other, but thinking about competing with each other in this aspect but what you are getting what you are giving to that person is you're you're praying for better for them you're you're saying you're you're doing an additional service for them in that sense and it's also benefiting you but thinking about that we're coming from this tradition that is not just saying hey if someone tells you hi you say hello right back um that when we come from this tradition of someone says assalamu alaikum they're already saying something beneficial for you and to you um, from a blessed source that you reply as well. Um, and it's not, you know, a, a building up or a competition in that aspect of like who has the most or whatnot, but you are uh, competing in the service of each other and being able to say, uh, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we oftentimes see, you know, the, or the familiar kind of fights at the uh, cash
cash register where people are trying to pay for each other or trying to do that uh, and trying to be like, no, let me cover this. I've got this. And, you know, you maybe have been at the at the middle of something like this. You may be the embarrassed person on the back, but you can at least see that uh, it's it's out of that other about of like, you know, wanting to make sure that person is taken care of and making sure um, that uh, you, you've got them covered and, and, and whatnot. And in a similar way, uh, with less tension in that space, being able to offer that. And so thinking about that at the foundation, we have this greeting that differentiates uh, us from using any other kind of greeting. It doesn't mean we don't use those kind of greetings, but it makes us check ourselves that what is the value of us using this greeting um, that Allah has told us? What is the benefit that it has? Um, and also with respect to what are we missing out on when we don't use this greeting? So then thinking about when we understand that this is a greeting from Allah, this is something that we are encouraged to greet each other with and to uh, increase in terms of not just its quantity, but its quality. When we see each other, to greet each other with at least the same or something better, uh, that when we have this foundation, what uh, does our Prophet tell us about these greetings? What does the Prophet tell us about what the benefit of this is? So, uh, in, in again, uh, the hadith drawing from this compilation of Riyadh al-Salihin from Imam al-Nawi uh, under his uh, suggestion, uh, his book of greetings, uh, the Prophet was asked which act in Islam, which action in Islam is best. And this is understood with respect to, you know, the, the, the rituals and the faraid of Islam, the, the fundamentals are already understood in that sense of prayer and zakat and uh, fasting and all these different things that that's understood but which action in islam is best and the prophet ﷺ, uh, re responding that to feed one another to give food to each other to feed each other and to greet everyone to greet everyone whether you know them or you don't thinking about uh, how the prophet ﷺ is emphasizing he then thinking about the context in which the prophet ﷺ is coming in uh, that He's coming into a context that is a highly tribal society, a highly uh, stratified society, a society uh, that even when they became a community with respect to Medina and had their own space, still had a lot of different tensions, still has a lot of deep-seated uh, generational uh, tensions and traumas that, that they are trying to heal and thinking about what things apart from our acts of worship that uh, fundamentally bind us to uh, our faith, to fundamentally bind us to Allah, um, what are those things that can help bind us together, that help reinforce and strengthen and heal those wounds or those fissures that we may have, and thinking about as the Prophet ﷺ lifted up, to give food, to feed each other, to uh, be able to in, in, enjoy this, and psychological studies will talk about the benefits of eating together, of sharing a meal, of all these different things, but then also to greet everyone, to not treat anyone as a stranger, to greet everyone, whether you know them or whether you don't. So if they're in your in circle, if you're there, your friends, if they're in or out, whatever they might be, they are entitled to at least a greeting. And what is that greeting? Allah tells us uh, in the Quran that is a greeting from Allah, that there's not a better greeting than it. Uh, and to be able to offer that to everyone, whether you know them or you don't. And the, and the Prophet continues in another hadith that by him in whose hand is my life, you will not enter Jannah until you believe. And you will not believe until you love one another. Shall I inform you of something that which you do? If you, uh, if you will do it, you will love one another. Promote greetings amongst yourself. Promote the exchange of the salam amongst yourself. So our Prophet has told us that you will not enter Jannah until you love one another and how the, what's what's an easy way to be able to cultivate the love um, that you can have for each other to cultivate this love so that you may go to jannah exchange the greetings of peace with each other exchange the salam with each other and not just as something cheap or just like salam alaikum salam alaikum but know what you're saying when you say assalamu alaikum that you you mean it <laughs> that you you are uh saying something that is 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 deep it's weighty it's it's significant uh but you're invoking the blessing and prayers um upon this person uh, and that the blessings of allah be upon this person the peace of allah be upon this person so you can't uh it, it, you can't say it in 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 a way that uh, you intend something bad and then you say this it, it contradicts it but thinking about for those of us in, in, in different spaces, that whether we have Muslims around us or whether we have people whom we can exchange the salam with, uh, just thinking about what that fosters for us. What does it feel like to be in a space where you might be the only Muslim 
And finally, someone else comes along who's not, uh, who's, who's, who's another Muslim or comes from another a similar faith background in that sense, and you're able to uh, finally be able to exchange that greeting of peace. You're finally able to relate with so many things that it's it's a relief almost. Um, I remember just growing up uh, here in, in Central Texas and in Austin that, uh, you know, before everybody started to move here, earlier on, there were very many Muslim families. There weren't many Muslims in general, like throughout, and especially in the suburbs where they're everywhere now. Um, but you would go into a Walmart, you'd go into a different space, and you wouldn't maybe see as many folks as you do now, but maybe you'd see that one Muslim family or that one uh, person and be like, oh my gosh, we're not the only ones. Uh, and so you would actually go and say salam to them. Like, oh, hey, like, it was, I feel like we're like uh, uh, just strangers in, in, in another country. But just to think about what that value is, what, what does that what does that feel like to be able to exchange that? Uh, and what does that cultivate? What is that? What is that? Is that that key that opens a door for so many positive things that what does the salam have for us in that aspect as well? So thinking about that, when we uh, strive to want to uh, love one another, to treat each other as we would want to be treated, to be able to uh, cultivate this kind of uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, faithful type of love for each other as as siblings, as brothers, as sisters, that where does that start? And then our Prophet has talked to us about the easiest way, the beginning of that space, to say salam to each other, to to be able to exchange that because a hello or a hi might not be able to achieve in that sense what a salamu alaikum from a genuine space can achieve. So thinking about promoting those greetings amongst ourselves and thinking about it's not just, again, for the sake of Muslim fine, Muslimifying, you know, our, our lives in that way. And just to say like, oh, we're just trying to do it for, for a selfish reason. But thinking about we're, we're trying to heal our hearts. We're trying to also, uh, at the end of the day, trying to get to a space, get to Jannah, where we, we where, where whatever happens in this life happens in a sense, but where we can ultimately achieve what is the ultimate goal for each and every one of us. Um, and where does that start? How can that start? What's the key to turn on this vehicle to make that journey? Uh, it's exchanging of that greetings of peace. The Prophet was also related in another hadith by Abdullah ibn as Salam, um, who in Medina related that when the Prophet had first come, and you know, again, thinking about this migration that has led to uh, you know, them coming to Medina. They're in they're they're in this new space, they're finally kind of setting up the foundations for their community. Uh, you have a group of people who've come from Mecca who are largely merchants and people in business and trade. And you have people in Medina who are farmers and more agricultural and tied to the land. Uh, but you also have different tribes that are coming together, not just amongst this group that has just migrated, but you have different tribes that are here, different groups that are here. And the Prophet not just saying this as a cheap thing, but in saying this in a way that it resonates for us, especially being in the societies that we are, being in the spaces that we are, the different divides that we put between ourselves, even as Muslims, we, we will we'll sometimes cling to our own cultural identities, our national identities, all these different things, uh, our, our regional identities or whatever it may be, uh, much more oftentimes than our own faith. And we'll, we'll put that, we'll wear, that'll be the badge that we kind of wear on our chest and our sleeve um, that sometimes puts these artificial divides between us and the Prophet so coming into this tenuous space, coming into the space that is still settling and telling the people, oh people, he says, exchange the greetings of peace, exchange the, the salam, afshuf salam, to feed one, one another, to give food to each other, strengthen the ties of kinship, maintain the ties that bind, the ties of family and the ties of kinship, and be in prayer while others are asleep. And the product of all this, and you will be, you will enter Jannah in salam, in peace. So thinking about what the value is of us when we build our community or when we are just trying to settle those foundations to be able to think about, uh, it's not just about building that foundation once and now we're just focused on building the rest of the house and all these other things and we're, we're not, we're ignoring the foundation. You can tell, especially if you live here in Texas or in different spaces that your foundations may start to crack. Uh, different things may happen, whatever may happen, you will need to reinforce that foundation. You'll need to revisit and see where are those fissures? Where does this foundation maybe need some stability or some revisiting or reinforcement? And thinking about when our Prophet has told us in the space of a foundational building of a community, people exchange the salams. Are we exchanging those greetings of peace? Have we lost that? 
Not, not, not just in the sense that have we lost it literally that we don't say the salams anymore, but have we lost the exchange of the greetings of peace where we just say salam as a casual instead of being able to inherit and think about what is the value of saying assalamu alaikum to each other? Do we have meals together? Do we share food with one another? There's oftentimes we'll talk about in different studies how families rarely in, in, in so many different settings um, because of work schedules and different things might not even be eating together, might not even be having that time. And what's the impact that it subsequently has, not just on that family's dynamics, but on the children and the later generations. Are we eating together? Are we eating with uh, our friends or family? Are we exchanging food? Are we exchanging meals in a time when we are hyper-connected to a certain degree, but we are also hyper-disconnected in another way? So thinking about exchanging the peace, feeding each other, strengthening our ties of kinship, that uh, how easy it is for us to just become lost and in, in, into our own personal pursuits and our jobs and our work and school lives and all that. And our family connection just becomes a FaceTime call and our family connection just becomes this. And are we evaluating the significance of that? And what's being lost that is is maintaining a tie of kinship uh, the same as just you know doing a FaceTime call and saying that that's that's basically what I'm going to do to maintain that tie of kinship or can we do a little bit better and to also be in prayer while others are asleep to challenge ourselves to have that time with Allah when our time with the world uh, is, is ceases in that sense and that ultimately this leads us into a space where we uh, come to Jannah in a space of peace. So thinking about what does that start with? And uh, it begins with exchanging those greetings of peace. Uh, in another hadith uh, related about uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, uh, it was related, and I'll, I'll read it from the uh, the, the, the book here from uh, Imam uh, Nawawi's uh, Riyad al-Salihin, that At-Tufail ibn Ubay ibn Kaab had reported that I used to visit Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhum uh, that in the morning and uh, accompany him to the market. Abdullah offered greetings of peace to everyone he met on the way, uh, be they sellers of petty goods, traders of poor people. And one day when I came to him, he asked me to accompany him to the market. I said to him, what's the point of you going to the market if uh, when you don't sell anything nor do you ask about any articles for purchase, nor do you offer a price for them, nor do you sit down with any company of the people. And, you know, let us sit down here and talk. And uh, Abdullah ibn Umar had replied that, uh, Ya Abu Batan, they said, Oh, Abu Batan, that, uh, you know, Tufail had a large, a large belly, so you can tell they're they're they're, they're good friends. They're probably not, you know, insulting him in that way, um, but you know, just in, in jest that we go to the market to greet everyone we meet. Thinking about that, Abdullah ibn Umar was not uh, just meandering around, was not just you know going aimlessly, but in, intentionally going to a space where people are busy, where people are doing their different things. He's not purchasing anything. It's like me going into the mall. If I'm going into that mall. I'm not buying anything. I'm not selling anything. I'm not doing anything there. But the only thing I did was to go and make sure I just greet the people um, that there's a value in that. And in and, and the commentary that's highlighting Abdullah ibn Omar's uh, passion for promoting the salam, to promote these greetings, but also as a practice of the sunnah to continue to maintain that. And our Prophet has told us that the person who is nearest to Allah in the, in the context of these greetings person nearest to Allah is the one who offers the first greeting. So thinking about when we race to, towards good with one another, we are competing in good with one another. Uh, it's not an act to push somebody down or to only be the one that comes out on top. That um, it's a, if I won, then we won. It's a, it's, it's, it's a collective type of a race in that sense, but we compete with each other in matters of goodness, as our Quran tells us. But thinking about that when we get to that space where we become that person that uh, continues to offer that greeting first, that greeting first, we can't put it on our own self. But the hadith have told, has told us that the person nearest to Allah is the one who offers the first greeting and that may Allah enable us to be a people who can offer that first greeting to consistently be the people in the first and to be nearer to Allah as we can. Um, and thinking about that, as our Prophet has emphasized that this greeting to those who we know, those who we don't know, 
to those who are above us, and those who are lower than us, as our society may see, whether and however our misconceptions might be that before the before Allah, all the believers are equal as the teeth of a comb, but our society has put different stratas, different things, and we may perceive ourselves on a certain class or in a certain level, or our job is at a certain management space, and uh, our, we have subordinates, or we have other things like that, whatever these kind of man-made kind of uh, stratas that there are that anybody and everybody is owed that reading of peace, that uh, basic uh, opening with respect to building a foundation. So thinking about that, our Prophet was reported to be able to go into different spaces, whether with children or with other folks who are marginalized, and offer those greetings and to exchange, to, to recognize their humanity, to recognize their personhood, to recognize them in that sense, and to be able to offer uh, those greetings in that sense. I'm thinking about what is that for us when we may say something is below us or not above or anything like that, uh, to, to remove those things. Uh, because again, the, the purpose of greeting one another, the purpose of offering the salams is not a worldly purpose in any sense. It has a tremendous worldly benefit, but it's something that ultimately helps us to get to the space to our ultimate goal, uh, which is in a reunion um, with uh, not just the uh, heavenly companionship of the prophets and the pious predecessors, uh, but to be in that space uh, with the ones whom we love, uh, with the one who has uh, is 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 al wadud the most loving, with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So I pray that may Allah allow us to be a people that live into the Sunnah to uh, be able to revive the Sunnah of the Prophet sallam's exchanging of peace to not just exchange the peace and to promote the peace, but to understand the significance of our greeting of uh, when we are casually just saying to each other, Assalamu alaikum or AOA or AS, we recognize the, the value of being able to say uh, our full salams and to give those salams, uh, not just right now in this moment, but also for the times to come and for the society that is around us that maybe be a people that not only revives the sunnah in its word, but also in its spirit. Uh, and maybe we also be a people that see the benefit of and see uh, the blessings of reviving this practice in its in its in, in an intentional and genuine way, uh, both in this life and the next. Uh, that this saying of salam it promotes peace, it promotes companionship, promotes mutual love and respect. And the last thing I'll say, it also promotes solidarity. It promotes an identity. It promotes a cohesion. That in times when just in as in as as we've kind of seen in these in this past year and even even more so before, with respect to when when uh, we may be targeted, when we may be on the front lines of trying to stand up for justice, when we may be uh, you know at the at the uh, at kind of like the edge of being divided and conquered by the different powers that be. Our salams is a form of solidarity. Our salams is is a glue that helps keep us together through the good times and especially through the bad times. And so we don't want to lose the value of saying the salams, not just as a way of things that is in an in crowd or as a way of just doing something because we were told to do it, but as a uh, as a saving grace for us and a necessary step for us in spaces where otherwise we may be uh, divided and torn apart uh, by the other uh, societal factors. And so thinking about that, don't lose those salams, don't discount the power that a salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh has to offer us, and especially uh, when we make it a part and parcel of our practice. So uh, may Allah enable us to be a people of salam. May Allah enable us to be a people that uh, greet each other, and not only just greet each other, but to return a greeting to each other with something that's equal and something that uh, is better. Uh, and may Allah enable us to be uh, reunited with the people of Salam, um, with the people who share those Salams, who have exchanged those in this world, who will exchange them in the life to come, and reunited uh, under the gathering of As Salam, um, who is the peace, the, the most peaceful, the one who is the infuser of peace, the creator of peace, uh, and the restorer of peace. And uh, may Allah enable us to uh, see these things, uh, not just uh, at, by before the, all of it said and done, but to be able to experience the blessings of this in this life, inshallah. I mean, uh, we also pray that uh, for those people who are living in certain sp in current spaces and situations where there is no like there's no semblance of salam, there's people uh, who are living in famine, uh, people who are living in war and genocide, uh, people who uh, may not be here by the end of this khutbah people who uh, are at the 
uh, the 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 expense of you know powers that are uh, that perceive themselves as larger than life that um, you know are at the mercy of of those who do not have a proper moral compass. Pray that may Allah uh, not just uh, restore them, provide them justice, to restore them in life, to restore them in a space better than this, but to be able to uh, assure them and to infuse them with a uh, a semblance of salam. And at the least, enable us to be a people to uh, be those ambassadors of salam, to convey that salam, uh, to say those salams, to bring that salam into uh, these different spaces. And may Allah uh, help any and everybody who is uh, suffering from oppression, from uh, genocide, from abuse, from uh, you know pain, from any kinds of. Uh, types of illnesses, any any other things that are plaguing this world, uh, and especially those who are uh, at the expense of um, complacency and desensitization and whatnot, uh, may Allah enable us to open our eyes and see that the first step is being uh, cognizant of what does it mean to say the salams for each other, and can we say the salams to our brothers and sisters who uh, are not experiencing any of salam right now? They are they're in absolute, uh, you know. Uh, chaos right now. It's, it's there. They have no peace right now. What does it mean for us to say assalamu alaikum to them? Is it just to say well wishes or is it for us to actually try and do something more uh, that our salam calls us to do? So may Allah enable us to uh, find this uh, within ourselves and to recognize what uh, our greeting of peace calls us to do. Inshallah, ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.